College in Blackrock County, Dublin. Second half of this opening game of day two of the Kate Russell tournament. Brought to you live and exclusively on Sporting Limerick. Crescent in firm control against this game, in this of this game against the Jazz, leading 3-0 at the break. Very, very easy first half for Crescent. And they'll be looking to add to their scoreline in the second half. It's going to be Anna Horn, their number eight. One of their star players to restart things here. I'm joined by Ivan Ovington, St. Andrew's Senior Boys coach for this game. And it's Crescent getting back to things back on the way. It's Emer Lane in possession. Out to Aoife Hickey. Come all the way across here to Amy O'Byrne. Easy for the Jays to defend that one on this occasion. Of course, Crescent now taking firm control of the competition and with a victory here. Their game against Kilkenny at 1 p.m. looking to be, well, could be the deciding one. We've Andrews and St. Andrews, our host this week, up against Ulster champions Banbridge in the next game and must win game for Andrews. As Aoife Hickey on the attack for Crescent plays it into the deep. Anna Horn, reverse from Anna Horn, it's blocked. It's going to be a free out for the Jays though. Dangerous play by Crescent. And Ivan, you'll be looking for Crescent in this second half to add to their scoring total to try and make it as difficult as possible for Kilkenny. Yeah, I think um, if uh, Crescent can kick on here and add another two goals, um, then depending on how the Bambridge-Andrews uh, game goes, um, they, they could be out of sight uh, going into that game and possibly a draw will be good enough for them in the Kilkenny game. Um, on the evidence that we've seen from Kilkenny so far, they're kind of very solid outfit. They have a brilliant goalkeeper, so you're going to struggle to score goals against them. Um, but I don't think they're going to put four or five past you. You know, they they might they might snatch one, uh, they might snatch two maximum in a, in a game. But I don't think they have the ability to to put you away. So if Crescent can finish here, there's number four. So if they can just add another one, and then depending on how the result in the next game goes, uh, they could be they could be out of sight. They'll be going into that Kilkenny game needing a draw. Um, so they they'll be in great shape. Yeah, excellent run from Lee Cleary. That's her second goal. Just ran unstoppable, or she was unstoppable in that case from a Jez point of view. Just beat three or four Jazz players, went around on the arc, found her way into the D, beat another couple of Jazz players, and a fine low finish past Anna O'Donoghue in the Jazz goal. As, as I just said, it's Leah Cleary's second goal of the game. She's been whipped aside just straight away after that, given her arrest. She was, as I mentioned earlier in this game, a vital player in Crescent's Munster campaign. Had a relatively quiet game yesterday, but she started off this morning on fire. That's Crescent's fourth goal, and as Ivan just mentioned, they're going to be looking for more. And with another goal this early in the half, good play by Robin Lee, another goal this early in the half. It looks good for Crescent going forward for the rest of the tournament. It's all the way out to this right-hand side now. It's Crescent in the hunt for more goals. Amy O'Byrne, good block on her by Nicole Quinn. Or Aoife Quinn, I should say. And that's going to be a Jez ball. And it's going to be Cuiva Cleary to take this sideline ball. Into the middle to Camille Keane. Keane under pressure from Sophie Klein. Klein a judge to have Fowler. And it's going to be a Jez free. have to think now even at this stage it's going to be a bit of damage limitation for the Jazz. yeah it is um you know but they they've got to keep going like there there's no put a game and a half to go here so keep going um you know yesterday i think they they showed some good signs that they they can be dangerous in the game against andrews i know they lost three nil but at nil all they hit the post um they had a little bit of intent so you know what i'll be looking for them to do now is just just to kind of you know compete a little bit more just make it a little bit more difficult for for Crescent I think it's far too easy for them at the moment so like you know you don't have to be a great hockey player to to run harder than your opposite number that's just a that's just a mindset thing that's a desire thing and I'd kind of I'd like to see them just compete a little bit more and you know hopefully uh, just you know show a little bit of show a little bit of fight here it's Crescent now on the attack once once more it's Emer Lane with the possession. Good play from Lane. She draws a free from the Jazz and looks to find Sophie Klein. Klein now surrounded by a couple of, of Jazz players, but Klein manages to win that free. Good play from the Crescent number nine. And of course, was among the goals in that first half for Sophie Klein. 
and it's into Nicole Griffin. Griffin's foul, bit of a professional foul on that occasion from Rian Spillane, but it's going to be Sophie Klein in possession for Crescent. Plays it back to Serena McDermott, back into Klein again. It's evaded everyone. And it's going to be a restart to be taken by Aoife McGovern. In fact, it's not. It's going to be a long corner. Did take a deflection after all. And Emer Lane takes it for Crescent. Back to Claudia Griffin. Crescent captain for the day. Amy Hearn getting a rest there. Goalkeeper and captain. It was Robin Leahy. There was a chance there for Lee. If she could have controlled that going into the D. She's Leahy's won it back. A poor clearance from Aoife McGovern. And plays it into Anna Horn. Horn with a chance now. Looking for number five for Crescent. And it's going to be, it's going to be a short corner for Crescent. Another chance for them to extend their lead, Ivan. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, you know, again, it's another attack coming straight down the middle. Um, you know, 16-yard hit there from, from Jez, turned over straight away by Leahy, and then it's just a straight ball straight into Horn. So uh, they need to, like, you know, Crescent, these are opportunities, and they just, as they present themselves, they need to be clinical here now and ju just, like, ruthless. Um, you know, to try to finish this game off. Every chance they get, keep going, keep going. That's the nature of the tournament. It's set for Anna Horn. Gets the shot away. It's going to be another penalty corner. It's hit the foot of Jazz captain Aoife McGovern. Another chance for Crescent to add to their goals. Currently have four. And with this competition, having the ability to be decided on scoring difference, Crescent are going to have to try and take every opportunity when they present themselves. It's going to be Georgia Keane again to take. Set up for Anna Horn again. Better strike from Horn. This is a good save. Anna O'Donoghue with a right foot. Just popped the right foot out. It's kept in play, that play there by Crescent. And it's going to be a chance here. Georgia Keane plays it into the middle. Looking, has Sophie Klein there. Klein tries to get away. Good defender for Camille Keane. And plays out, out to Gillian Downs in front. And an opportunity for the Jays to counter attack. And Gillian Downs is brought back. Play will come back here. It's going to be a Jez free. That's going to be taken by Cueva Cleary. Jez now looking to get an attack on. It's going to be another free for them. As they look to try and salvage something from this game. It's Cueva Cleary to take once again. Not many options in front, so she's going to be forced to go back to Aoife McGovern, her captain. McGovern now takes on Robin Leahy. Beats her. In fact, it was Elle Sorensen. Beats Sorensen. Ball eventually, luckily, fell to Camille Keane. It's over at Rian Spillane on the right hand side. Well defended on that occasion by Sarah Fitzgerald. The Crescent number 18. It's going to be Fiona Kelly to take. Plays the ball down the line. Zara O'Toole on it to control it properly. And it's going to be a Crescent free. Played upfield. Good control from Sophie Klein. Turns well. Plays the ball away to Robin Lee. And Crescent on the counter again. They have a playing advantage, was one of the umpires. It's going to be a free back in backfield for Crescent. And it's Robin Leahy going to take us. In fact, it's going to be Claudia Griffin goes all the way back inside. A bit of a pernickety umpiring, shall we say, on that occasion. Either way, it's Crescent in possession. It's going to be Georgia Keane. Plays the ball out to Claudia Griffin. That's a bit sloppy from Crescent. And that's something Ivan Crescent can't afford to let into their game. No, they, they just need to they need to keep going here. I think the key thing for them now is like stop running with the ball. Stop running with the ball and pass the ball. Save the legs. You know at at this stage game is won. But there's space there, so just pass it and and keep moving. You know, resist the temptation the temptation is when space is there is to run the ball. But just pass, 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 save the legs. You're still gonna create a You'll create more opportunities by doing that. So they need to manage this game well and um, you know, not give away anything silly here either and, and, and get lazy. Just keep going. Uh, important also that Crescent don't concede as well as they look for more goals. They've got to keep it tight at the back as well. As Sarah Fitzgerald, their second year student, is on the run. That could be a sin bin indeed it is for one of the Jazz players. It's Zara O'Toole that's going to be a sin bin. She wasn't sure at first whether she'd got the green card or not, but now she's off. And it's Sarah Fitzgerald launches the attack for Crescent. Plays it a 1-2 with El Sorensen. That's, that's way too strong a pass from Sorensen. And she tried to find Sarah Fitzgerald again. And it's going to be a free hit here for the Jazz. And it's Ethan McGovern once more to take. McGovern assessing her options. Doesn't have much movement in front of her. And just 
Horses the ball forward and it's intercepted by Claudia Griffin for Crescent. On the way back to her number three, Georgia Keane. And it's Claire O'Mara now in possession for this Crescent. Like good block from Gillian Downs as the Jazz. She tries to flick the ball forward. Good interception from Amy O'Byrne, but Downs does well. Brilliant dribble from Downs and encourages the Jazz sideline to make a bit of noise on that occasion. But she's forced to go backwards and eventually comes into the middle. It's a poor touch by Cuiva Cleary. It's hit her foot. And that's going to be a free to Crescent. It's Serena McDermott that will take this free for Crescent. She's got Claire O'Mara on her right hand side. She tried to find Leah Cleary instead. But it's going to be a Crescent ball, sideline ball eventually. And it's Claire O'Mara to take. Deflection by Gillian Downs. It's going to be a free for Crescent for something that happened in back play, of course. This is the first of five games on day two of the Kate Russell tournament here, live and exclusively on Sporting Limerick from St Andrews College in Black Rock, County Dublin. The hosts are up next against Banbridge, the Ulster champions in our second game of the day, and that will be followed by what could be the deciding game, we don't know as of yet, between Crescent College and Kilkenny College. That game taking place at 1pm, third game of the afternoon, but for the moment we'll be concentrating on this one as Crescent in the search for more goals. They currently lead 4-0, two goals from... Aoife, or sorry, from Leah Cleary, and one each for Aoife Hickey and Sophie Klein. It's Aoife McGovern here, plays it all the way across to number two, and that's Fiona Kelly. Kelly out on the right-hand side, a strong pass out to Aoife Quinn on that occasion, but it's one back by Crescent, and on the run, it's a good bit of play that occasion from Nicole Griffin, but it's going to be free, and Griffin now has play in the... Yeah, it didn't go five, and that's going to be a free back for the Jazz. Lucky escape for the Jazz there, but Crescent need to be more patient at times with that. Good interception from Clara Mara, and Clara Mara now inside is Sophie Klein. She looks for Klein, it wasn't accurate enough. Good defending from Fiona Kelly. Now pushed in towards the middle as Zara O'Toole returns from her sin bin. And she's been blown up for a free, and Crescent... It's going to be Claire O'Mara to take. And Crescent now with Serena McDermott. Good tackle. Good tackle for Mary Rooney. And that Jez side, but it's going to be another. And it's Serena McDermott brought back onto the sideline. And looking at options now, things have just slowed down for Crescent in the last couple of minutes. Got to keep sticking to their task. Look in this search for more goals. El Sorensen in possession. Good control from Sorensen. Sees her beat a Jez player. It's up now to Sarah Fitzgerald. Good close control for Fitzgerald. Finds Sophie Klein. Eventually comes here. There's a chance here. Claire O'Mara is in and goal. If she can be found, it's a chance for O'Mara. Can she finish? Still a chance for O'Mara. She puts it away. Good work once again from Nicole Griffin in the build up play for the Crescent. And a goal for Crescent. That's number five. Fine finish from Claire O'Mara and Ivan. It's just all too easy for Crescent once again. Yeah, it is. Um, key thing for them is they've got Horn and Leahy off the pitch now, so they're they're keeping those guys fresh for the game later on. I think looking forward to that game later on against Kilkenny. I'm seeing just kind of a couple of things in this Crescent game. There's a lot of balls that are going straight. They're they're playing the ball straight up, um, and I think that what they'll need to do against Kilkenny later on is they're going to need to keep kind of changing the channel and, and going out and around if they play if they play the same way again this afternoon against Kilkenny they're just going to walk into that kind of trap that Kilkenny set in front of you so and they're, they're going to find it frustrating they're going to get bogged down they're going to leave themselves open to counter-attacks um, the three games we've seen against Crescent we've seen Crescent play so far uh, I still haven't seen kind of evidence that they're able to move that ball, you know, left to right, right to left, dip it into the middle, take it back out, move it again. Where, where, they, where they've gained pockets of space is their ability to take uh, freeze quickly and then for the likes of Horn or the likes of Leahy to beat a player, break a line and then create 2v1s in behind. So I think that's going to be a, a fascinating battle of, uh, kind of, you know, contrasting styles where Kilkenny will, will sit in and make it very, very difficult for Crescent to play the game that we've we've seen from them so far. 
Um, so, I, you know, they're, they're home and hose in this game, but with regard to the tournament, um, uh, that, that's the, that game is going to be absolutely massive later on. Uh, just as we were, I was talking about previewing Crescent's next game and what they need to do against Kilkenny, maybe. It was an injury as Crescent scored that goal for the Jays keeper. That's Anna O'Donoghue. She's now been replaced due to injury, but it's Crescent on the attack looking for more again. And it was Claire O'Mara, the last goal scorer for them, who wins the free on this occasion. It's going to be another chance for Crescent. And it's going to be O'Mara to take. Plays the ball back to Aoife Hickey. Hickey comes back inside. Good play from Hickey. She's fouled by Gillian Downs and Hickey to take the free herself. In fact, it's going to be called as a short corner. And another chance for Crescent to add to their score and currently lead 5-0. Two goals from Leah Cleary as Anna Horn comes back onto the field. Two goals from Leah Cleary and Aoife Hickey's after falling down injured here. Not sure what the problem is here for Aoife Hickey. She just... Looks to be, as Ivan has suggested, next to me here in the commentary box, something, maybe a little bang to the head. She's trying to get up again. She's discussing with the umpire what the problem is here. And there seems to be a bit of laughter between the Crescent players, so I think Aoife Hickey's okay, <laughs> judging by things here. But it's going to be another chance for Crescent. As I mentioned, Leah Cleary with two goals, one from a penalty stroke for Crescent, and one each for Sophie Klein, Claire O'Mara. As Crescent discuss what they're going to do from this short corner. Yeah, yeah the sub, sub keeper for the Jays facing this for the first time. That's Grace Murray, I believe, in that Crescent goal. It's going to be Nicole Griffin that will take this one for Crescent. Big chance for Crescent now to make it six from this short corner. Georgia Keane also off the field here. And Anna Horn is back on it, set for Horn. Played all the way to Hickey. Hickey looking for her second goal now. Hickey with the flick, still there for Crescent. It's going to be cleared by McGovern. And away come the Jets. And a chance for the Jets to counter attack here now with a two on two. And away they come. That's actually Grace Murray there, but a brilliant piece of defending there from Claudia Griffin to scupper that attack. And Crescent come away with it, but it's going to be a free to the Jets. And Murray plays it down, looking for Zara O'Toole. O'Toole. Faced by Amir Byrne, but O'Toole beats Amir Byrne with relative ease. Good run here from O'Toole. She's got players inside the D. Big chance for the Jazz again. It scores. It's off the post and in. And here the Jazz have finally, finally got a goal. Just waiting to see who that who the scorer is. It looks to be Gillian Downs from what I can see here. That has got that goal for the Jazz. But a great run from Zara O'Toole. Finally the Jazz. Something goes the Jazz's way after three games. And a deserved goal. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's great to see them get off the mark there. It was a super bit of work down the right-hand side. She's managed to beat two players, and a lot of cases, players just kind of get a bit excited once they get into that area, but she's pulled a great ball back onto the P-spot, and then it's a, it's a really nice finish uh, low down into the bottom corner. So, you know, deserved for that little bit of, uh, that little bit of play in along the, the right-hand side, and, and w once she got into that key area... Um, she just uh, she picked a pass which was key and then a nice finish but a horn back on the pitch here now um, again they just need to manage the game is one just keep cool keep playing this ball around keep moving it yeah Crescent into a 5-1 lead they don't need to do anything over dramatic maybe look for more goals but don't need to force the play as they look for that as they were caught in the counter attack really there they don't need to be conceding goals either it's a good play from the Jez goal scorer there, Gillian Downs, has had a good tournament. She's been one of the better players on this Jez team, along with Fiona Kelly and Zara O'Toole, who created that goal. As Aoife Hickey has possession for Crescent, all the way out to Claudia Griffin. She's Sarah Fitzgerald in front of her, but offs the goal to Sophie Klein. Good control for Klein, but well tackled by Kelly. And it's going to be a free to the Jez. Crowd's beginning to build here for the second day of action, the Kate Russell tournament here in St Andrews. Blackrock, St Andrews College here in Blackrock, County Dublin. Of course, the first of five games that are going to be streamed live exclusively on SportingLimerick.com is Crescent in the hunt now. It's a good interception though for McGovern from Sophie Klein. McGovern plays it forward. 
Good defending at it by Amy Byrne, just on the edge of the Crescent D there. She's been a solid, solid player today for them. Plays it up to Claire O'Mara, but a good interception from Downs. And Anna Horn's back on the field for Crescent. So Byrne now with possession for Crescent. Across the Griffin. And Serena McDermott. It's McDermott's won the free. Plays it into the middle now, and it's Aoife Hickey. Who seems to have taken that position in the middle of the park. From the vacated Robin Lee, who's been rested for game for the next game. It's Claire O'Mara now in possession of Crescent. Shooting chance. Gives the ball across to Maeve McNamara. Chance for McNamara. It's another go for Crescent. Absolutely brilliant finish, but it's decided that it's dangerous play. It's a very harsh call on Crescent on that occasion. Brilliant finish from Nicole Griffin. But the umpire there, down by that goal, seems to have, de has decided, there's no seems to be about, has decided. It was a dangerous play from Maeve McNamara's shot. And has off dis disallowed that goal for Crescent and Ivan. It's a pretty harsh one. Uh, if, I, if I was coaching, I wouldn't be happy. He's given a short corner here. Like, it, he's, he's given it, he's, he said it's dangerous, but it, dangerous to who? Dangerous to who exactly? The ball's come across. The only player it could possibly hit is the player that's actually put it into the goal. So, you know, I'd be a little bit disappointed there if I was Crescent. You know, if he's, if he's signalling danger, it has to be dangerous to somebody. And it, it's dangerous to nobody, uh, in my opinion. So, um, you know, it's great, great finish. But look, referee's opinion is the one that counts. Um, but again, Jez or... Um, Jez conceded a corner here, just not, not backing off. Um, and a chance for Crescent here to look for number six. Yeah, it's going to be Griffin who finished that chance. That takes it set for Horn. Takes a deflection. It's gone boy. It's going to be a long corner. Another chance goes a begging in one sense for Crescent. They'll be a little bit disappointed with what happened with that, but there's nothing they can do. As Ivan mentioned, the ref referee and umpire's decision is final. And Crescent will still go and search for a six goal and it's Aoife Hickey to take this long corner for them. All the way out to Emer Lane, it's into to Sarah Fitzgerald, as course mentioned earlier. Second year student, a seriously talented hockey player. To be playing Senior Cup at that age. And it's going to be a free for the Jez, though dangerous play. And it's going to be Aoife McGovern to take this free as we come up to the end of this game. Second on the list today, St Andrews College, our host here for the Kate Russell Tournament. Up against Bambridge University, or ba Bambridge Academy, I should say, <laughs> not Bambridge University. No danger, says the umpire on this occasion to our right. He sees danger there, or no danger there, where several players' heads were in danger from my point of view. But there was none for that easy finish for Nicole Griffin. Not an easy finish, a fantastic finish for Griffin, but we'll move on past that as Crescent come and search for that sixth goal. It's Claire O'Mara in possession here, and it's O'Mara. Is blocked, deemed to be illegally on that occasion by Camille Keane. And it's going to be O'Mara who has players in front. She opted to look for Leah Cleary. And it's a good interception that occasion by Mary Rooney on the Jez side. There's 22, just over 22 minutes gone of the second half. It's Crescent in search for six. It's hit a foot. That's going to be another short corner for Crescent. Another opportunity to get the six goal, Ivan. A goal that would be, could be vital later on in the day. Well, it, it could, you know, every every goal, like in a tournament that's this tight um, between those top four sides, every single uh, every single goal that that they get it is key. But a uh, call's coming in here now from the uh, from the coach, so he's obviously seen something in what the Jazz are running. He, he's seen a pocket of space somewhere, but um, you know they've had three, four opportunities now to to push on from corners. They've gone direct with them all, so maybe they, they might look at a, a, a move here. The, there's possibly a gap somewhere, so I'd probably expect this to be moved. Yeah, it's going to be Amy O'Byrne to take for Crescent. She's not the usual taker. It's gone to Sarah Fitzgerald again. Fitzgerald plays it across. Shooting chance maybe for Leah Cleary. Plays it all the way right to Hickey. We know Hickey can strike it. Good work for Crescent here. Off the crossbar. Chance is still there. It's blown just before. Great chance for Anna Horn. It's hit one of the Crescent players' feet. I think it was Serena McDermott that hit, but Horn hits a crossbar from close range. A very well worked short corner by Crescent, though. It was, yeah. I, I said I expected it to be moved. I didn't expect it to be moved five times, but uh, no, it was uh, it was very well worked, very well worked, and deserving of a goal. Ended up with Horn where he'd want her on the P spot with the the goal at her mercy. But the defenders did enough. Uh, put it onto the crossbar. 
um, and and Jez survive. But um, that would have been that would have been a nice way to to finish off this game for Jez. Or a really nice, really nice corner move there. Uh, Gillian Downs now an attack on the attack for the Jez. They search for a second goal. It's good defending from Crescent on that occasion. It's going to be Amy O'Byrne who's able to deal with that situation in the back, takes it out of danger and flicks the ball away out over the sideline. It's Crescent just playing out time now, having missed that chance. Anna Horn shot off the crossbar. Gillian Downs' attempted pass into the takes a deflection off Clara Mara's foot. It's going to be a free for the Jez as we come up to full time here. A chance played across by Cuiva Cleary. It hasn't gone five, and that's going to be a chance for Crescent to clear their lines. As they move, they'll they move now to the top of the Kate Russell tournament, of the table, I should say, of the Kate Russell tournament. And they'll move them to, f to seven points, having two wins and a draw from their three games to date. The Jays, sadly, heading towards their third defeat. At least the one positive from them in this game is that they've managed to work the scoreboard. With their first goal of the game coming from first goal of the tournament coming from Gillian Downs. But their tournament, they've one game to play, and their tournament is done. Leah Carey tries to flick it across to Sarah Fitzgerald. But it's gone out over the sideline, and it's going to be Eva, Eva Durkin to take for the Jazz. She plays it forward all the way across to Gillian Downs into the centre. Good defending from Crescent on this occasion. Falls to Sophie Klein. Good stick for from Klein. She's Amy O'Byrne out on the right, side, right hand side. Good movement from Amy O'Byrne to create the space for herself at that time. Takes a deflection off Maddie Mitchell. And away come Crescent again. Long ball from O'Byrne looking for Maeve McNamara, but it's gone out over the side and it's going to be taken by Sophie Klein. She was looking for the run of McNamara. It's fouled by Gillian Downs. Played up now in the middle for Cleary. Lee Cleary, chance, it's all come all the way. Chance here for Maeve McNamara to make it number six. Icing on the cake for Crescent, superb save by the Jays keeper. Still a chance here for Sarah Fitzgerald, another superb save. And it's gone in, and it's, is that a penalty stroke for Crescent? It is, yeah. It's a penalty stroke for Crescent. Someone blocked the ball with their hand. I think it's been given for handball. Very harsh on the Jays goalkeeper who made a couple of fantastic saves on that occasion. And there's been a sim binning for Camille Keane, a yellow card, I should say, say for Camille Keane. And Leah Cleary has the chance now, Ivan, for her second penalty stroke of the, of the morning and to give Crescent a 6-1 victory, which will probably be the last action of this game. It's Cleary with the chance. Makes no mistake, fine finish. And that's 6-1 lead for Crescent, and that's just exactly the way they wanted to finish this game. Yeah, no, that's, uh, <coughs> that's exactly what they want. That's plus five on their goal difference, um, which sets them up nicely now going into the next game. Uh, like, they're, they're in a great position now, two wins and a draw from the first three games. But, you know, with regard to winning this tournament, they're certainly not out of the woods. Um, you know, we saw yesterday with Kilkenny, they're, they're very, very compact. They're very, very difficult to break down. You've got to move the ball and move it very well to get in around the sides, to try to get in and around the back of them. Um, and I just haven't seen evidence that, you know, Crescent have the ball pace um, to actually to do that. And then even if you do get in around the back of Kilkenny, you've got Ellie McLaughlin um, to deal with in goals, who, who was outstanding yesterday in the Jazz game. But... I don't think we've even we've even seen kind of what she's capable of yet. She's a phenomenal talent. So, like Kilkenny will be a very very tough nut to crack. They're they're like a kind of a rolled up hedgehog. You don't know how to how to deal with them. You know they're very very difficult to uh, to break down. So, you know a draw in that game keeps Kilkenny in it. The goal difference, the goal difference is there. You know if if Andrews can come out. And uh, or Bambridge can come out in the next game and win that game. Well, then they Bambridge go into the Jez game looking for goal difference. If if Crescent draw the game, Kilkenny are still in it. Um, they'd go into the last game if Andrews can beat Bambridge. Then they're looking at beating Kilkenny in the afternoon if that game's draw. So there's there's the Crescent are in a great position now. But th this tournament is far from over. They've done everything that has kind of been asked of them up to this point. But, you know, they, they've got to close it out. So short corner here 
this is where uh, like final whistle is gone. So Crescent will just look to box this, D, stop that ball coming out, and, and look for that seventh goal. Yeah. Every single one of the outfield Crescent players around the D has a wait for El Sorensen to take this. Comes back, it's flicked into the middle, looking for a deflection on it, hit the post. Well, it's gone out, and that's full time here. A fantastic performance for Crescent. They've dispatched this Jez side with ease. Leah Cleary's hat trick, two of the goals coming from penalty strokes, and a wonderful individual goal have led Crescent to victory here. We'll be back soon for the Banbridge versus St Andrews game, but it's Crescent on top now in the Kate Russell tournament after this 6 1 victory over the Jez. Join us soon for that Banbridge St Andrews game. <laughs>